Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab, and you're watching a Let's Play video of every single Sega 32X game that was ever released. The Sega 32X was the 32-bit add-on for the 16-bit Sega Mega Drive. I bought into one of these machines at launch on the promise that I was upgrading my machine to give it the power to play such games as Virtua Fighter and Desert Tank. Did Sega make good on this promise? Did they fuck? In my mind, I pictured this running on my brand new 32X. In reality though, it was games like this. Although some games were released on CD, so if you own this monstrosity, the games would take full advantage of this whole setup, like this game here, Night Trap. It's much better than the Mega CD counterpart, but I won't be covering games like these here, just the cartridge games. So, let's dive right in. We start here with game number one on our list of 34 games, and it's this. Hello, I'm Fred Couples. Welcome to Golf Magazine's 36 Great Holes. Welcome to Golf Magazine's 36 Great Holes. Sorry, what? 36 Great Holes. Yeah, there's no hose in this game, although after playing with the sound test, they might just be hidden really well. Ooh, just too hard. Ooh, just too hard. Ooh, just too hard. Anyway, on to the game, and it's golf. You aim with a crosshair and select the club and take a swing. It plays okay, there's not much more you can say about it. It's golf after all, and nothing ever interesting ever happens in golf. Game number two is Afterburner 2. And sure, Afterburner's a good game, but it had been ported so many home machines decently already before, you had the Sharp X68000 version, the FM Towns version, the PC Engine version, all of which are very good. Sure, I enjoy Afterburner with all the flying around, lining up the crosshair and then releasing the missiles to blow up the bad guys, but I'd rather have seen a different home conversion, maybe something like Power Drift rather than Afterburner again. Number three is a game called BC Racers, and at first sight, it looks like the Flintstones meets Super Mario Kart. But once you begin playing it, it's clear it's not worth a wank. It's set in the equally shit Chuck Rock universe, so the stages in the game reflect that. Stage one is your standard caveman's town area, stage two is set at night, and there's a huge fucking fail here. You have your headlights forced on, which lights the road ahead, but for some reason it makes seeing the corners a lot harder, so you just crash everywhere. The fail comes in when you finish the race and the camera pans around you. Now your headlights are off and you can see the corners properly. The graphic effect that is supposed to help you actually makes it harder. GG guys. Stage 3 is a desert, stage 4 is a jungle, each stage is only different because of the background, they don't actually have any course features like in Mario Kart. I'm bored of this game now, next! Game 4 is made by Blizzard and it's called Blackthorn. It's a slow paced action adventure game that involves you controlling this dude who has some great animation and a rather beastie gun. You have to traverse dungeons in this game and inside you'll find people who will help you and bad guys who will attack you. As well as this, you have to navigate platforms by climbing and using well-timed jumps. The dungeons are pretty big mazes really, so the slow pacing of the game is just right. It's got a great feel to it, and it makes the whole package a very enjoyable game. Game number 5 is Brutal Unleashed. This is the upgraded version of Brutal Pause of Fury, but don't let the word upgraded fool you. This game is utter toilet. You select one of the ninja animals, and then go on to the one-on-one -on -one fighting. But look at it, look at it. This is supposed to be a 32-bit game, and it looks like arse. Seriously, what were these developers playing at? Capcom put out Street Fighter 2 before this came out, and that was on the standard Mega Drive, and it looks and plays a million times better than this. You control a spasticated kung fu animal who just jumps all over the place, and when you do hit an enemy, it doesn't feel like it, it connects. It's just bad, bad, awful shit. Game 6 is another fighting game, but this one is set in space, and is called Cosmic Carnage. I really like the graphics on this game. I think the fighters are quite well styled, but the backgrounds could do with some work. Anyway, I've selected Naruto here. Despite the visuals, the game controls are very clunky and slow. A lot better than Brutal, but nowhere near Street Fighter. 
Game number seven is called Darkseid, and it's a space shooter. Strangely enough, missions don't seem to be the same every time you play. On my first go, I had to shoot down asteroids, and on the second, I had a mission to take down enemy ships. On my asteroid mission, I was flying around aimlessly trying to spot the rocks myself. I flew around for ages and must have missed tons of them, which is why I didn't really get anywhere. It wasn't until I attempted the spaceship shoot that I actually noticed the map on the screen. Can you see it? It's here! Yeah, it's pretty easy to miss when it blends in with the background so easy. After getting killed on the ship shootout, I had another go on the asteroid mission, and now I could see the targets on my map, I completed the mission. Level 2 was just the same as level 1, so I fucked this off and moved on to... Doom, which was game number 8. Now, a lot of people complain about this version, but I think it does a great job of capturing the feel of Doom. Sure, it's got these stupid borders, and the music sounds like a cat having a fit on a MIDI keyboard, but the 32X version feels just like the PC game did, and I think that's the most important thing. People with their tongues lodged firmly up Mario's arse will tell you that the SNES version was amazing and that it didn't need special 32-bit hardware. But the SNES version was donkey and it controlled like shit. Just look at it, it's a mess! Talking about messes, game number 9 is FIFA 96. Now, as a FIFA game, this is really bad. The ball goes out of camera shot a hell of a lot, which makes controlling your players very hard. It's kind of juddery, and the CPU skills are a bit higher even on the standard settings. But the game holds quite a bit of historical importance for the series. You see, this game predates the release of the Sega Saturn or Sony PlayStation, so this is pretty much the first proper three-dimensional console FIFA game. Before this, FIFA games are all pretty much a 2D affair, but the 32X version was EA's first real steps into a 3D FIFA game. Sure, there was a 3DO version, but no one gives a shit about the 3DO, just like they don't give a shit about the Master System version either. Game number 10 is a Sonic game, but this Sonic game is different because it doesn't actually have Sonic in it. Who it does have in it, however, is good old Knuckles, mighty from the Sega Sonic arcade game. Vector the Crocodile from the Sonic Band, plus a few new guys too. This is Chaotix, and this is the final release of the prototype game known as Sonic Crackers. You control one person of a two-man squad, and are capable of moves including momentum speed-ups, swinging, throwing, as well as moves like Knuckles' trademark wall climb. The game has got some well-designed levels, nice-looking colourful graphics, and some of the best music of the whole Sonic series. The special stages require a good mix of remembering the layout and having good reflexes. The only slight naff part is when you find a hidden entrance to a bonus stage, and what's waiting for you inside is a bit pants, and nowhere near as fun as anything offered in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Anyway, all in all, this is a really good game, and one of the few really fun games on the 32X. By contrast, we now have Game 11, and it's Calibri. I think that's correct. It's made by the same team as Echo the Dolphin, and it's every bit as bonkers. You control a hummingbird, and you fly around this admittedly nice looking area. Now, when I first played this, I had no idea what the hell I was meant to be doing. I tried attacking these beehive things, I tried flying into other birds, nothing was actually progressing me through the game. So I flew around for a while, but nothing really happened. Turns out, what you actually have to do is fly near to the ground, and then you interact with a plant. Then the colours change, and a crystal gives me powers. The next thing you know, I can shoot things out of the sky, and I have to take out all the bees. Once you shot them down, you can progress to the next level. And you shoot the guy in the next area. It's not the greatest shoot em up, and adding a puzzle element only ruins it further. I'd take a game like Thunder Force 4 over this any day. Game number 12 is called Metalhead, but it has nothing to do with Rockers or Ninja Turtles. No, this is a game where you have to pilot a mech and have to complete missions which normally involve shooting stuff. Now, that sounds great, but it's utter chaff. The graphics have aged really badly and the game is very repetitive and it gets old after about level 3. 
You see, level 1 asks you to kill all the enemy mechs in the area, so you run around and use an aiming system which is about as precise as a paralytic student at a rock festival. Mission 2 is another mech hunt in the same area. Mission 3 is yet another mech hunt, but one of the mechs is now painted a different colour, but it's still in the same area. Mission 4 asks you to take a photo of the enemy base in the same area. Once you've taken a photo, you've got to kill all the enemy mechs to progress to mission 5. By this point, I fucking blew this right off. Game 13 is Mortal Kombat 2. You know Mortal Kombat, it's the shit version of Street Fighter, but with naff controls, ridiculous actors wearing wanky costumes, and with stupid gimmicks to make up for the lackluster gameplay. But if you like Mortal Kombat 2, then this is one of the better versions. Next! Game 14 is called Motocross Championship. This is a real buggy mess. The computer AI is a joke, and at the starting flag, they all just pile into each other and cause each other to crash right away. Once you pull away from the madness, it doesn't get any better. The rubber banding means that you can seemingly pull away from the other bikes and it seems like you've left them miles behind. But one tiny little mistake and they come flying past you like almost they were on your tail the whole time. The controls feel like you're controlling a slab of butter sliding around a hot frying pan. And the graphics? Oh, the graphics. It's got to be some sort of achievement to be able to make your game look so much worse than a game that was made on weaker hardware many years before. At least game number 15 is NBA Jam. Now, I've never been that good at this, but at least it's fun to play. You select a two-man team from the world of NBA, then dive right into a two-on-two -two basketball match. This is not a serious basketball game like Bulls vs Blazers. It's not that technical, i.e. it's a lot more fun to play. The passing, shooting, dunking, it's all easy to do. The only real threat is the computer AI, and that's how it should be. You shouldn't be held back by controls, your obstacles should be trying to outfox your opponent, so this makes NBA Jam a really good game. An updated version came out for the mighty PS3 and the Shitbox 360 a few years back. And that's a great version, so if you want to avoid retro gaming like Greeks avoid taxis, then that's well worth checking out. Game 16 is American football, or as we call it in England, Rugby for Girls. This one is titled NFL Quarterback Club, and it's standard egg ball really. There's a few options that probably don't make much difference, and then you're thrust right into the main game. It's better looking than the FIFA game we saw earlier, but it's not that much fun. It's not like I don't like American football games at all, you know, I like the NFL Blitz on the Dreamcast, I just don't like this game. Now we have game 17, and it's Pitfall. Cheap deaths involving pits, boring graphics, boring level design, boring mobs, boring music. Bod, 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 bod. Game 18 is Primal Rage. This is based on the fast paced dinosaur beat em up in the arcade with the digitised graphics. There, the characters look big and chunky and add some nice animation. Still not Street Fighter, but really the only game around this time that was even close was King of Fighters. But the 32x version of Primal Rage is a bit pants. The dinosaurs have all been scaled down so they don't look as good, but the main problem is that it's a much slower paced game and the fun is all gone. Sure, you've still got the farting monkeys, but that's not enough to help this game from being yet another pair of skiddy pants in the 32x library. RBI Baseball is game number 19. It's baseball. Fuck baseball. Game number 20 is Romance of the Three Kingdoms 4. This only ever came out in Japan, so there's no English 32x version. As it is, I can't really read that much Japanese beyond yes, no, and a couple of other useful phrases. Anyway, this is a strategy game that has a cult following. I've never really tried to get into it, but I do like these styles of games, and maybe one day I'll have a proper sit down with one of the other English version games in the series. Game 21 is called Shadow Squadron. It's another space shooter. You fly into the area and try to shoot down all the enemy ships. Your spaceship has the same turning circle as an ocean liner, although the rest of the controls are pretty decent. 
there's not really a great deal to say about this one. It's space, you fly, you shoot. It's not very exciting, it's not terrible. It's the very definition of an extremely average game. Once you shot down all the bad guys, it's on to the next level. As for me, I'll be moving to the next game now. And that game is number 22, it's Space Harrier. What you have here is an arcade perfect version of the classic Sega sprite scaling shoot 'em up. I was always impressed by the arcade cabinet for this game because it, the big version had a seat belt which you had to wear to stop you from falling out. If you've never played Space Harrier, then surely by looking at the footage here, you can get a good idea what's involved. You fly forward and you shoot the bad guys. Game 23 is Spider-Man Web of Fire. After the title screen, the intro to the game is a series of newspaper headlines. City hostage to Hydra's Web of Fire. Hydra deploys the enforcers to the city. Joker Cola and Cancer Link. Anyway, there's been many a Spider-Man game, but I can't think of one that's worse than this. And yes, that includes the Atari 2600 version. If you put this next to something like Maximum Carnage, you'll see how crappy this 32X version really is. The levels have very little variety in them, the graphics are really dull, the controls are okay when you're rushing past standard mobs and swinging through the air, but once you face any sort of boss, they just fall apart in terms of, of effectiveness and playability. The game is poorly programmed, so if you do manage to play long enough to meet a boss, it slows down to an absolute crawl, which affects how the game controls even further. You'll be better off sticking this cartridge up your ass than in a 32X machine. Game 24 is a rather interesting title. It's Star Trek Starfleet Academy, Starship Bridge Simulator. That's a long name. Now, I don't have any interest in Star Trek at all, but I thought this was a good game. It's like a cross between Police Quest and watching the Star Trek TV show. You control a guy who starts off at the academy, and you can choose to take a mission, go and hang out with the others in the academy, and even go and play pool. You can go and read books on the extended law, advanced instructions on piloting the ship, different planets that you can go to, different races in the universe, you can read all about it. There's a lot to read and you can choose to go real deep in understanding the game. The missions start off as simple message quests, but they soon spiral into having to involve rescuing people, acting as a diplomat between races, tracking down items in the galaxy, and using all the abilities that the ship has, to, like the operating the tractor beam, firing lasers, controlling the engine, and even setting the alarm level. It is a very deep game that can be played in very many different ways, depending on how you want to control the ship. It has a very relaxed pace to the game, which gives you time to think and decide how you're going to tackle each situation and what you're going to do. As a strategy adventure game, it's very good, and if you like Star Trek, I'd imagine that this would be amazing. Easily one of the best games on the machine, and one I wouldn't have expected to be as good as it is. Game 25 is this. Oh shit, Flair! Quick, quick, quick! What is it, Dodgy? I just had to stop the intro music before George Lucas comes along and slaps my ass with a copyright strike. Hey, why are you here? Hey, do you want to hear a joke? Okay, sure. Okay, Luke Skywalker walks into a bar. Ouch, it's Colonel Akbar. Right, Han Solo walks into a hut. Ouch, it's Jabba the Hutt. Right. C-3PO walks into a pub. They don't serve him. I don't get it. Anyway, so yes, this is Star Wars. It's a conversion of the Sega arcade game from around the same time. And I really like this game. It's got a great atmosphere. Although, on this playthrough, Level 2 wasn't quite as easy to control as I remember. Level 1 has you flying around space and you have to take down a certain amount of tire fires. It's smooth, sounds great, and despite the untextured polygon graphics, I still think it looks good. 
So that's level one. Then level two has you flying down to the Starship Destroyer and through its engines to blow them up. This is the section that controls a lot worse than I remember. I had a hard time avoiding the walls or trying to take out the mounted guns. I like the graphics in this section even more than I do in level one, but the controls do ruin the experience somewhat. With a little bit more practice, I think I can get this down, but I didn't while I was recording the footage and I died quite a bit. Game 26 is an odd one called Tempo, which has a really shit rap as its intro. This is a platforming game, which has a very heavy musical theme running through it. I think the graphics are quite good and the controls are quite tight, but the level design and layout are piss poor. Many platforms are not as solid as they look and the path you need to take through the level is not as clear as it should be. As I'd say that the quality of the platforming is pretty much the backbone of any platforming game, so the lack of it here makes Tempo a pretty poor game. Game number 27 is an utterly terrible mech shooting game for t -Mac. Yes, even worse than Metalhead that we saw earlier. In this one, you're put into a fucking awful looking arena, given a timer, then you have to kill as many other enemy mechs in the arena before the time runs out. Shit point one, these are not mechs. Shit point two, your ship is probably not a mech either because you don't control like one. Shit point three, there are no fucking mechs in a game called fucking T-Mech. The other not mechs in the game are controlled by dribbling retards and make killing them so easy that you might think you're in a Dignitas clinic and not in a combat arena. So to round this up, no mechs, look shit, combat is shit, it's shit. Next. Game number 28 is Tough Man Contest by EA. I decided to be Coolio, then dive right into the action. Now, at first look, this appears to be a 32-bit version of the classic Punch-Out by Nintendo, or Mike Tyson's Punch-Out if you managed to buy the game before he raped that girl. This game controls nowhere near as well as Punch-Out. Hell, it's not even as good as Final Blow. This is one to avoid, but if you do want a bit of fighting, then you want game number 29, which is this, Virtua Fighter. The polygon count might be far lower than the arcade version, but this game feels and plays exactly the same, and that is much more important. For those that don't know, Virtua Fighter is one of the first one-on-one -on -one fighting games to use polygon graphics. Yep, before this it was just sprite based games like Street Fighter and King of the Fighters. But it wasn't just revolutionary in terms of graphics, it's the mechanics that were brilliant and the punches really felt like they connected. I really like this game and it's one of the great few games for this system. Game 30 is another game in the Virtua series, it's Virtua Racing. Like Virtua Fighter did for fighting, Virtua Racing was the first polygon based racing game to hit the arcades. I like this version, but if I'm honest, it feels more like a souped up translation of the Sega Mega Drive game and is not a port of the arcade game, which looks far more impressive in my opinion. The 32X is still a good version, but I feel like they could have done much more than what is on show here. Game 31 is another baseball game. This is called World Series Baseball. They say World Series, but let's be honest, it's only American Japan that actually played this game. To make it even worse, this game only features teams from America. This is hardly World Series. Game 32 is WWF Raw. I covered this in my WWF video, and I did that a few months back, so I don't want to really retread the same ground again, but in short, it's not very good. Game 33 is WWF WrestleMania Arcade. I also covered this in my WWF video, so yeah, same again. And finally, game 34, the final game is Zaxxon Mother Base 2000. This is a total remake of the 1982 arcade game Zaxxon. It's an isometric shooter, which I still think looks good in this footage, 
but oh boy, it's got some weird controls. Uh, not as bad as the 1982 version, but still not good. You control a large ship that seems to be able to discharge a smaller ship, which you can control instead of the larger one, but it's got its crappier shot over the other one. All the bad guys are made up from polygon graphics, as to is your own craft. However, all the backgrounds are 2D. The midway and end level bosses all look good, but the whole game is let down by rubbish controls. And that's it! All 34 32X cartridge games released for the system. Most of them are pants, a few of those are good, but really, this system was never going to take off. What with the Sega Saturn and the Sony PlayStation only around the corner, this project was doomed from the start. Hey Dodgy, are you finally going to get on with the Hellground WoW review now? Yeah, yeah, I've taken a long enough break from World of Warcraft now. It's time to get back in the saddle. See you all next time. Ah, bye.